Give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. All right. We had a bit of um, technical issue with the things, um, the screen, the things we needed to project. So we had to adjust the program a bit. Amen. And so they just told me that I'm ministering. <laughs> So I came to minister. Amen. Precious Almighty Father, we are grateful for the privilege you've given to us to be here. Thank you for GGC 2024. Thank you for the anointing of your spirit. Thank you for the mantle that you have released. And we give you the praise. Be exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we're asking that your word will come and distill upon our hearts as the dew of heaven, and everyone will be blessed and lifted in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. All right, you may be seated. While I sat down there, the Lord downloaded into my spirit the message for the day. Amen. I have not heard it before. I haven't preached it before. But God just downloaded it into my spirit. So um, you have to listen with rapt attention and just follow me. Amen? All right. The Lord said, teach my people on prospering under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Prospering under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So how do you prosper under the Lordship of Jesus Christ? And when I'm talking about prosperity, I'm talking about Prosperity in every ramification. Prosperity on every side. Prosperity in every regard. Prosperity. In other words, prospering spirit, soul, and body. Prospering in your spirit, in your relationship with God, in fellowship with God. Prospering in your spirit, walking in um, the virtues of God's kingdom, being established in righteousness, being established in the fruit of the spirit, which is primarily love, praise God. And then prospering in your soul, in your mindset, your psyche, your emotional life, prospering in your choices, making the right choices, and prospering in your body physically, in your health, hallelujah, and then having more than enough to meet your material need. So, prosperity on every side. Can someone say amen to that? All right. Now, in Romans chapter number 10, Romans 10, 8 to 10. If you can put it up, I'll be glad. If not, I'll quote it. But what said it, the word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, it says, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we confess unto salvation by confessing the lordship of jesus christ amen so somebody is about to get saved the person repents of his sins and then the thing that he does next okay according to god's word is to believe in his heart or heart that jesus christ died for him and was raised from the dead on the third day by the power of God and then confess with his mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. So entry point into Christ is actually the Lordship of Jesus Christ acknowledged by the beneficiary of salvation. Every prospect of salvation, if you really want to be saved, you have to acknowledge with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life. Can someone say amen to that? So when you got born again, you came into Christ, the body of Christ, through the Lordship of Jesus, acknowledging the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Can someone lift up your right hand and say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Louder, say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. 
All right, now say this way. Say, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Louder, say, Jesus is my Lord. All right, so um, the Lordship of Jesus Christ is actually the covering of the believer. The Lordship of Jesus Christ is the covering of the believer. Can someone say amen to that? Now, the covering of the local church is still under the covering of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The covering of the pastor or the apostolic covering is still under the covering of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So the covering of the believer ultimately, primarily, is the covering of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Can someone say amen to that? Now, when a man and a woman get married, the woman comes under the headship of the man in the covenant of marriage, right? Now, <clears throat> the woman will now submit to the leadership or the headship of the man, not for oppression by the man, but for leadership. Can someone say amen to that? All right. Now, that covering in marriage covers the woman, in marriage. In life, the covering of a believer is the lordship of Jesus Christ. And to make Jesus Christ your Lord, to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, simply means that you have taken him as Lord. In other words, he will direct your life going forward. He becomes the one who gives you instructions, the one who tells you things to do. He orders your steps. He moves you from here to there and then moves you into your destiny by ordering your steps one step at a time. Can someone say amen to that? So the Lordship of Jesus Christ is actually the key to our prosperity. If you remember what David said in Psalm 23, Psalm 23, all right, if you start from one, Psalm 23 and one says, the Lord is my shepherd to lead me, to guide me, to protect me, I shall not want. Now, how does the Lord provide for us? The Bible says, he leads me, all right, beside the still waters, okay? He makes me lie down in green pastures. So, the green pastures of prosperity for our lives, either spiritual or soulish or bodily or physical, amen, the green pasture is actually um, in a place where God will lead you to. God will have to lead you there. Can someone say amen to that? You don't know where the green pasture is. You don't know where the provisions are. God knows that place. So he leads you there one step at a time. Can someone say amen to that? If you don't let him lead you, then that's why you are struggling in some things. Let the Lord lead you. The Lordship of Jesus Christ means three things. How many things? Number one, the leading of the authority of God's word. The leading or leadership of the authority of God's word. Number two, the leading or leadership of the Holy Spirit in dwelling the believer. Number three, the leading or leadership of your recreated human spirit, born again spirit. That's what they call all right, the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Now, hear me. For you to say Jesus Christ is your Lord indeed, we can take care of the children. God bless you. Amen. Let's take care of them. For you to say Jesus Christ is your Lord indeed, then you must have submitted to the authority of the Word of God. In the beginning, the Bible says, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him. Nothing was made that was made without him. And then it says, that Word that had been in the beginning, before everything began, became Jesus Christ, became flesh, and dwelt amongst us. So when you say Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, you mean the living Word, the living Word. Can we say that? Say Jesus Christ, the living word. Out loud. Jesus Christ, the living word. So who is Jesus Christ? The living word. Come on now. Who is Jesus Christ? I can't hear you. Who is Jesus Christ? All right. So taking Jesus Christ as Lord of your life is taking the living word of God as Lord of your life. In other words, the word of God directs you. 
The word of God leads you. The word of God guides you. Can someone say amen to that? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Now, if you don't let the word lead you, all right, the confession you made at salvation, okay, you are trying to repudiate it or renounce it or deny it. Praise God. Don't deny what you said. You said, Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. You said it, that statement. You said it at new birth. All right? Now, don't go back on your statement. Be a true Christian at heart. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. Follow the leadership of the word. Now, our prosperity is in following the leadership of God's word. Submitting to the leadership of of the written word. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. Now to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, the Bible, it is because there's no light in them. So the Bible, the word of God, is our light. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. That's our light. That's our light. Look at Psalm 119 and 130. 119 and 130, okay? It says, the entrance of thy words giveth what? Light. It gives understanding unto the simple. So the entrance of God's word gives light. What gives light? The entrance of God's word. When the word of God enters into you, it gives you light. So what is our light? The word. Come on, what is our light? I can't hear you. What is our light? I can't hear you. What is your light? What is the light of the believer? The word of God. So the light of God's word will show you where the green pasture is. In prosperity, all right, the food for your spirit, all right, thoughts and peace for your soul, strength and health for your body, prosperity for your material needs. Can someone say amen to that? The Lord will lead you to it one step at a time. Now, how did we get to camp here? Okay, a brother came at the Akure Church, GLT Akure. All right, Pastor Laulu was shortly between Ife and Akure at the time. All right, and then we, we called for uh, SOTM partners to partner with SOTM. And the brother stepped out, all right? And he held something in his hand that looked like documents. And so Pastor Laulu was asking him, all right, what is this for? He said, well, I want to partner with my land. Your land where? In Ibadan. Ah. So, okay, how did you get the land? Um, they gave it to me, family uh, land, inheritance. Okay, so fine. So after service, he called me. Okay, we had been praying before then for a campground. And then he told me a brother sold a land as partnership seed with SOTM, praise God. And as we were praying, the Lord said, your campground is in that area where you saw the land. You know, the land is actually a stone throw from here. I've not been there. I may not be there forever. Glory to God. It's not my land. He said SOTM what? Seed, not my own. So SOTM delegates went there to check it. Can someone say amen to that? <laughs> so the Lord said, your campground is in that area. So immediately we heard that. I called my wife, set up a committee right now. We need to get a landed property. We we're even thinking of landed property. All right, just bare land, virgin land, we we'll clear it, okay? And then we we'll start building on it. <clears throat> But well, we, we um, formed the committee, and then <laughs> they started looking for a property for camp, for GLT camp around here. And a church member walked up to one of the pastors in Agricola and said, my dad is an estate agent, all right, and is willing to uh, sell a particular, they are selling a particular property for one of their clients, praise God. And then he asked and said, where? He said, so-so place. Ah, that's the place we're looking for a property for, for campground, for GLT. Let's go there. So they went there, and they came here, and they saw all the roofs were green. 
and they screamed. I said, ah, this is our property. This is our campground. All right, it's our green color, GLT color, green, 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 green. Amen. So he called in a hurry and said, ah, that there's a land somewhere and all that. You know, it's like a camp. The man is interested in selling. You know, it's been built already. In fact, it's a ram whose horns were held in a ticket. Praise God. So I said, okay, that's fine. So we came over. We, we got here. And when we got here, I said, this is the place. Glory to God. God led us here. This is the place. And then we came in. We started negotiating with the man, all right? And he looked at us, said, uh, where are you from? He said, well, we are from Ife, all right? He said, okay, what church? We mentioned the name of the church. He said, do you have this kind of money, the amount of money, all right? We said, by the grace of God, we do. So are you sure? He said, we are sure, all right? So I didn't say anything initially, all right? I just told him, I said, you know what? Thereafter, we are going to pay in installments. You know, we'll just made the arrangement. And he agreed to it. Praise God. And then we started. And in no time, we bought. Everything is fully paid for. Glory to God. We're not owing a dime from anybody, either living or dead, to the glory of God alone. Can someone say amen to that? Mm-hmm. So we moved in. Now, how did we get here? Sometimes people are struggling to get into their green pastures, to get into the provision God has made for them, not because they don't, you know, have, um, what, what, what do I call it now? The assurance in their hearts, yeah, that's the word, assurance, in their hearts that, you know, God is going to take care of them. But they don't know how he's going to do it. And today, all right, the how is actually hidden in following the leading of the word of God, following the leading of the Holy Spirit, and following the leading of your born-again human spirit. Can someone say amen to that? All right. And that's what the Lordship of Jesus Christ is all about. So, we, we came here, and we are here. Glory to God. How many of you like it here? All right. Give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. When we came in here at the auditorium, all right, we had partitions in between. Everything was scattered. The ground ground was really messed up. And when I came in, God said, bring down the walls, everything. And that's your auditorium. All right. So when we're bringing down the walls, bam, 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 bam. People didn't know what we were doing, but I saw it already. And then we brought down the walls, we did the flooring, and then the tiling. Glory to God. Now, when I stood there, I was praying. God said, put up a structure there. I said, what would that be? He said, make it a two-story building. So I called one of our sons in the faith, the architect. I said, work on it immediately. I want it tomorrow. He said, that his, I said, I want it tomorrow. And when I want something, I want it in a hurry. Pastor Laulu knows, when I want something, I'm on his next. He's shaking like this. When I want it, I want it now. All right? Mostly when God speaks. Mostly. Praise God. So, and he quickly worked on it. He a sketch of the plan, and he brought it. I said, okay, so tomorrow we are starting the setting out. <laughs> all right, we didn't have much money in the account. So I said, Lord, but at least what we have, we can start something with it. So we started the setting out. We set out for the, you know, boundaries of the building, all right. So I went to God in prayer again. I said, so how do we go about it? And the Lord said, take no offering for it. Tell nobody about it. Let them see my wonders and give me my glory. So that they will not think it's their money that is sponsoring the ministry. Amen? Don't make people feel like they are your God. Because they are not. Can someone say amen to that? They are not. I'm not your God. I can never be your God. I'm only your pastor under God. Can someone say amen to that? Man, that's simple. 
So, we started. So I said, Lord, how? He said, watch and see. I'm going to show you my power. And then pe people started giving money that I never mentioned anything to. They were dropping money into the account and dropping. <laughs> when we're done building and we're handing over to the church, we're handing over to GLT, we're not owing anybody a dime. Not one cobble. Amen. That building and everything inside fully paid for. Glory to God. God paid for it. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. Christians that are struggling to prosper are actually not actively and dynamically under the lordship of Jesus Christ. They are trying to do it their own way. They are trying to make it happen in their own strength. And by strength shall no man prevail. You are trying to do it in your own strength. Like, um, uh, uh, no. No. Glory to God. Amen. And God said, now take it higher. Go up. I don't want to see small, small buildings, bungalows here. He says, go up. So all the small, small buildings you see there will bring everything down. Amen. We are going up. Come and say up. Yeah. Glory to God. Now, how will it happen? God who said it will do it. When you follow God, you are following God unto abundance. He called Abraham alone and blessed him and increased him. God blessed him and made him more and much more. Can someone say amen to that? God will not call you and demote you. You can't follow God and run at a loss. You cannot follow God and diminish. When you follow God, you follow God unto increase. Can someone say amen to that? You go from glory to glory to glory. Say amen to that. Mm -hmm. That's it. So following God to that green pasture that is prepared for you, the leadership of the word of God plus the leadership of the Holy Spirit plus the leadership of your recreated human spirit, put everything together, they call it the lordship of Jesus Christ. So let me start with the first one. The leadership of the written word of God. Hallelujah. Now, this is how you know a true Christian. Jesus Christ said to the um, Israelites who believed in him, all right, in John chapter number 8 and 31, 31 to 32, he said, if you continue in my words, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. Now, people who are born again, who are babes in Christ, saved by grace, everybody, we come in that way. Now, we are all believers. Now, the difference between believers and disciples all right, is that disciples follow the word of God. They are submitted to the authority of God's word. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. amen. So you have to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. How? By following first and foremost the leadership of the word of God. Make God's word your final authority. Make God's word your final what? Authority. Whatever God's word says, a true Christian at heart will submit to it. It is not by feeling. Uh, I may not feel good about it. I may not like it, naturally speaking, but my spirit deep within me likes it. Can someone say amen to that? And so I submit to it by faith. By faith. Glory to God. By faith. The Bible says to walk in love towards one another. You do that by faith. Amen. So no hatred, no malice of any kind. You're walking in love. Why? God's word says so. The Lord said a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. He says, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you have love one towards another. If you love one another, then you are my disciples indeed. Glory to God. This is how to show that you are a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Walking in love. Walking in love. Amen? 
Who said it? The Lord said it. We obey it in faith. Glory to God. So every day a true Christian will submit every part of his or her life to the authority of God's word. Every part, your marriage, your finances, every part, you are submitting every part to, your, to the authority of God's word, submitting it to the authority of the word of God. Every part. Every part. Amen? All right. One day the Lord said something. He said, you know, I gave you an instruction regarding your wife. He said, I said to love her the way I loved you and died for you. Amen. And I said to answer her softly and tenderly and never be harsh towards her. Amen. Read it. Instruction to husbands from God's word. Never be harsh towards your wife. Don't be harsh towards them. Love them. Love them. So, and he said, don't ask her to do what I told her to do. Pray that she would know and understand what I told her to do. But you know what I told you to do already, okay? So go ahead and do it. You should have put up that scripture on don't be harsh towards her. All right? You should have. Who is projecting? Huh? Who? Huh? I don't like silence. So who? Huh? Okay, okay. Amen. Amen. Can Tommy project for me, please? Minister Oge, God bless you. All right, let Tommy do it, do it today. Where You know I've not preached this message before. All right, so <laughs> I'm just following the leading of the Holy Spirit right now. So, and I want somebody who can cooperate with me. Okay, uh-huh. So, the word bitter is the same thing as harsh. That's it. Husbands, love your wives and be not what? Harsh or bitter against them. Now, how many of you men here your wife, maybe she's asking for money. You know, leave me alone, Anna. What is your problem? Why, why are you behaving like this? You know, he says, don't do that. Amen? So I had to adjust my emotions. I said, Lord, I believe your word. Help me. Amen? Hello. How many of you have been harsh towards your wife? You've been harsh. Be sincere. All right, you don't, you, anytime you say, oh, darling, sorry, oh, Pele, I love you. All right, you've been harsh. <laughs> Look at it there. Husbands, love your wives and do not be what? Harsh with them. Amen? How yeah. many of you got that? That's the word. So, you know, for, for a true Christian, Anytime you find the light of God's word, whoo, my God, you start adjusting. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Glory to God. Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes I want to talk to my wife. I'm swallowing saliva like three or four times. No, I'm, I'm serious. You know, one time I was praying and I was deep into the prayer. <laughs> she just came and said, D, D, D. I said, ah, Jesus Christ. You know what I wanted to do, right? Ah, 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 now. Can't you see what I'm doing? What is the thing now? You know, I wanted to talk that way. So I swallowed saliva three times. I had, I've heard God. God had rebuked me. Said, don't do that. So don't be harsh with them. So I said, so what, what do you want now? <laughs> she said, I just thought I needed to share something which is very pressing on my heart. Glory to God. I said, um, can you wait a bit? Eh, he can still wait and all that. I said, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Amen. <laughs> I said, okay. Uh, so I started praying. And I continued praying, rather. So as I continued, <laughs> thereafter, what she wanted to share with me was something very trivial <laughs> to me. But sometimes women, there's a way you, you amplify things. I don't know how you do it. You just come and... It's like blow, blow. <laughs> Amen. But the Lord said, don't be harsh with them. Don't be harsh. Now, many women are grieved because their husbands have been harsh with them. True? Grieved. God says, and so I now said, okay, I think I need to look up all the instructions of God to husbands in Scripture. I started looking up everything. I checked everything one by one by one, and I started meditating. Put it in my mouth, meditating, meditating. And, and I just said, Lord, I surrender my marriage and submit it to the authority of your word. Amen? That's the life of a Christian. All right, you cannot do this to your wife. <laughs> you can't, you can't. That are you? You can't, you can't do that. No, no. Let the men shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, no. Amen. Yeah. And then I did that, surrendered it. Then I now went... I said, I'm a husband, number one. Number two, I'm a father. So I looked up all the instructions God gave fathers, gave to fathers in scriptures. So I ah, now saw, one day I did something. The Bible says we should not grieve our children. All right? So I did, I did something. Something happened. I didn't like what they did. I came back, you know, so I was angry. So I just called who did so so and so? They said, oh, so so person and all that. And he said, Daddy, I can explain. I can expl I said, don't explain anything. Pa, 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 pa. All right, so much later, I now discovered that he didn't do it. All right, it was another person that did it. <laughs> I won't mention names. <laughs> so I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I didn't find out the truth. I'm sorry, I was angry. Help me. So I went to him and I apologized. I said, son, I'm sorry. All right. And with, with tears, I'm sorry. I should not have done that. Glory to God. Amen? And today we're we are the best of friends. Glory to God. You bring every, if you really want to prosper, bring every area of your life under the authority of God's word. Don't say, hey, my wife is like, you don't know my wife. Even if the Lord knew my wife, you would not say this. The Lord would say, be harsh and slap her. No, no. No. Don't do it. Amen. So I started bringing every aspect of my life that I know of right now. I'm not perfect yet, but that I'm aware of is under the authority of God's word. Every aspect. All right? Now, God may say, son, that one is not under. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. All right? Immediately, I bring it under the authority of God's word. Every aspect. If you really want to prosper as a Christian, don't be jumping around and just say, I'm a Christian. I don't know why God is treating me like this. And God is saying, I don't know why you are treating me like this. You've never obeyed me once. You want all my blessings, but you will not submit to my word. Let him talk to you too. You are complaining, and I, I don't know why God is treating me like this. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm serving God. I come to church regularly. And I, how are you treating God too? Amen. So, you now come to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. There are some things that are not written 
in black and white in scriptures. Amen? But the Holy Spirit will whisper those things to you, will tell you, this is how to go about it. Now the Holy Spirit will lead you. Sometimes you want to do some things, he pulls you back. There's a pulling back, he pulls you back. Pull, come back. Don't. You know it within. Say, well, Lord, I don't know why, but I know you're pulling me back from that thing. I think I need to pray. And then you're praying and the Lord says, I don't want you to do it. They call it the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I remember the first time, you know, before we had a fire accident thing, that day that we were to travel, I woke up in the morning, I was praying. The Lord said to me, deep within, in a strong knowing, don't travel. Don't travel. So I said, I told my wife, we are not meant to travel. She said, but looking at my schedule, that's the only time we have for that appointment. I should have said, we can cancel it. Amen? When I looked, I said, oh, that's true. Okay, let's go. So we went. And in the middle of the road again, it came again. The leading of the Holy Spirit came, was strong. Ah, so we're not meant to go to Lagos today. But somehow, I don't know, I just felt, the, that's why, let me tell you something, don't let anything be too urgent or too important than the leading of the Holy Spirit, the nudge of, or nudgings of the Spirit of God within you. Huh? Say, hey, it's a contract. It can wait. Dead bodies are there in the mortuary. They can't give them contracts, so. So we went, it happened, and my wife said, ah, but you said it, I said, all right, we have learned our lessons in a very bad way. I have not learned any lesson like that before in my entire life. Amen. But we went through it. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and now, if I hear cra in the spirit, I've not, I've not, I've not decoded the crown. I just heard cra or ka 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 ka. I would tell my wife, wait. <laughs> she would immediately say, ah, I became bosh on you. <laughs> All right. We have, we, have been, we have been aligned now. Any notch in my spirit, I follow it to the letter. Something was to happen, we still shortly between Ife and Lagos, then travel to minister to people <clears throat> at the Lagos church. And then, one day, I woke up in the morning, I was to travel that morning, and the Lord said, mm -mm, don't go. So I told my wife, I said, we're not going. And she said, yeah, that's fine. Do you know that Otedola Bridge? All right, a trailer tumbled, carrying PMS, and tumbled and caught fire. And cars behind the trailer were catching fire in quick succession. And it happened that way, and I calculated the time. It was about that same time that I would get to Otedola Bridge. I would have caught fire too, God forbid. Amen? Sometimes we think it is God that is to blame for some things. You say, hey, and that brother was devoted to God. Oh, I don't know why God treats people like this. It is people, I said, have you noticed that it is people that are really devoted to God like Job? All right, that go through hard times. So I say, hmm, hmm, revelation. It's not revelation. <laughs> Maybe God told him not to go, but he didn't listen. Amen? So the leadership. Now submit to the authority of God's word, then follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you're at a party and it's about time to eat and the pool. Go back home. Go back home. Drop the food. Don't eat your last meal there. Drop that food. Don't eat it. Leave it and go. Say, ah, I can't miss that pounded yam. All right. They wrapped it in a way. Ah, yeah. Let it go. Amen. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. 
And in following the leading of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you to prosperity. Can someone say amen to that? There are times, I remember we went somewhere one time and we were to give a seed. And in my mind, I had determined what I would give. So I said, according to the written word, let every man give as he what? Purposed in his heart. Not grudgingly of necessity, for God loves it. So I knew what I would give. I had purposed in my heart. I would give this. So, but and I, I just felt in my heart that the Lord was leading me to give something much more than that. So I said, Lord, what's that? He said, give times 10 of that value. And I had the money. Amen? So I said, yes, Lord. Not knowing that God had already spoken to another person to give me times 10 of what God said I should give. Do you know there are times people will say, I want to give times 10, but they will change their mind. You changed your mind too when God spoke to you, didn't you? He said times 10. He said, let me give times 5 first. And the remaining times five, you didn't give it. <laughs> are, we, are we together? <laughs> so that's the problem. Amen? Do you know that God can lead somebody to bless you and the person is just blessing you because God said to bless you. True? Not because, you know, you, um, you are worthy of the offering. God instructed them to favor you. True? It can happen that way. You didn't work for them. You didn't show them any favor. But God will just bring that person to bless you. Why? Because God is interested in blessing you. But you see, you have to learn to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Can someone say amen to that? Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. I remember when I was on campus as an undergraduate, it happened that, you know, I came in late, a bit late, my admission letter didn't come out in good time. So when I came in, they had distributed accommodation to freshers and finished all the accommodation. So I had to buy a bed space. And I bought it, I remember, maybe 2,225 or 2,250, I can't remember a specific amount. So it was almost everything I had then I paid. So a brother came to me and said, can I stay with you? Can I escort? I said, why not? So he came. And then another brother came. Glory to God. So I said, what's this? And then I had to leave the bed for the two of them. I got a very slim mattress, put it on the floor. I slept on it. And then another brother came. Yeah. So I said, okay, we're going to sleep on the floor together. My bed space, I left it. Glory to God. Amen? One thing I kept checking within, the Lord was giving me that nudge, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Glory to God. And I did it. So one night, I lifted up my hands. I said, Father, thank you for the privilege to host your children. And the word of the Lord came to me and said, you will never have any challenge with real estate again the rest of your life. Anywhere you go, I will give you a house. I will give you what? A house. And God has been true to his word. Now, let me tell you something. If you don't follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit, there are a lot of good things you may never enter into the rest of your life. You have to learn to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. If God says give an offering, give it. Amen? Amen. Don't hold it back. You don't know what you are holding back by holding back that thing. It's not so much about money as it is about yieldedness to the Holy Spirit. As it is about obedience. The obedience of faith. It is not so much about money. Even money, money. No! No! Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. 
follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. I can tell you testimonies upon testimonies upon testimonies. All right. The easiest thing for me to get or to build now is real estate. I carry that anointing. God spoke to me. Come on, are we together? God will lead you. All right? But the first test is that God will check your heart whether or not you are leadable, yielded to him. And where God is leading you is a place called there. Jehovah Jireh. Can someone say amen to that? It may take your son to get you there. Take your son Isaac. It may take your house to get you there. It may take one millionaire to get you there. But it's, it's not about Isaac. It's not about your one millionaire. It's not about 20,000 naira in your pocket or in your account. It is about where God is taking you. Amen? The connection to Jehovah Jireh was Isaac. God wanted Abraham to take his son. He didn't want to kill Isaac. God is not a murderer. Amen? The only person God ever killed, okay, for sacrifice was his own son. Amen? He never killed anyone else. Why? Because God will not do it. He just wanted Abraham to get to that place called there. Amen? Glory to God. Went to Agricola for apostolic visit. There was a word that came. The Lord spoke to me and said, there's a brother here, all right, God spoke to you to buy the church a keyboard. And he came out. Amen? And we said, what's the brand of keyboard again? Pastor Kualumi. Eh? Montage. Okay? So, and at the time, it was 7.5 million naira. And it came out. He surrendered to give it. Praise God. And then he went back to work. Every blessed day, God began to bless him and bless him and bless him. Do you know, he pulled out the money, 7.5 million naira, like he was pulling out, you know, just a sachi of pure water from a bag, a pack. Amen. And he bought it. True? Uh -huh. God told me right there, all right, when I went there, he said, give such an amount of money to, you know, the generator. And I told them, yeah. And I sent the money, first one, and then the second one, I sent it. And I, I redeemed my vow, didn't I? Okay. God said so. So it's not about money. Sometimes people think, hey, you know, God is interested in your money. Church, you will take your money. Do you know there are people here, you may never give for life and won't feel it. I'm telling you, try it. <laughs> try it. You'll be the one to suffer for it. We will not feel it. You just come and say, ah, they have done that one again. These people, where are they getting the money from? That's the question. To people who are following God, it's an answer. God is faithful. So people are not following God, it's a question. Where are they getting the money from? Question. <laughs> God bless you, beloved. So when God says do something, all right, and you hear God, do what God said to do. Do it. Amen? Amen. Do what God said to do. And that, that is how to go from glory to glory to glory to glory. Amen? The first house we ever built, <laughs> we were in church, and I said, Lord, what do I give as my seed of sacrifice? And God said, the house. I said, ah, all right. So I told my wife, I said, the house is gone. I said, yeah, God had confirmed it in her heart too. So are we going to be counting houses now? Eh? How many are we going to count and say this one, that one, that one? How many? But the very first one we had, and the only one, at the, at the time, we gave it. Are you following what I'm saying here? Sometimes people feel like, eh, we don't know what they are doing. We, yeah, we are telling you now. All right? So that when it's time and people are asking, what is the dominant secret of this ministry? All right? The secret is simple. 
following God part time, following God's word. God says to do something, we do it. Even on our realms, we give ministers. Do you know we pray to know what to give them? Lebro Shanama, and God says, give that one. We don't say, well, this is what we have, that's what we're going to give them. No. Amen. Come on, are we together? Yeah. Now, the third one, following the leadership of your recreated born again spirit. Now, there's a witness in your spirit. Your spirit is born again, plunged into the Holy Spirit. All right? So your spirit is in tune with God, in tune with heaven. So there's a witness of God in your spirit. Sometimes it is not the Holy Spirit leading you. It is your spirit telling you, don't do that. Now, it's like, how many of you here, you, you didn't know that a particular leaf was bitter leaf? And you just put it in your mouth and ate it. And almost immediately you spat it out. Anybody like that? You ate something you thought would be good, but you, you found out it was bad. All right? And you spat it out. Anybody like that? Good. That's the feeling you have in your spirit. <laughs> like, so what's that? And then you're praying. Your spirit is withdrawing from it. Amen? Amen. Amen. When you follow that witness of your spirit, Romans 8, if you read from 14 to 16, Romans 8, if you follow the witness of your spirit, all right, you will understand the direction God will have you go. Sometimes, okay, it is the spirit of God within you that witnesses with your spirit to set the course of your life. So that that path you must go, it will set it. And then on that course, God will now begin to show you the steps to take. The steps to take. Glory to God. Amen? Come on now, amen. amen. When I met my wife, I had prayed. I said, Lord, any time my wife comes by, close by, Lord God Almighty, just alert me. Amen. So the moment I, I saw her, she alighted from a bus. The moment I saw her, there was a vibration in my spirit. I just, like, the, my spirit was beeping. Amen. Glory to God. And I just liked her from within. So I said, Lord, what's that? He said, that's a signal in your spirit. That's your wife. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. There are some people, let me tell you something, there are some people right now, you are still in relationship with them, they are not benefiting you per se, you are sowing into their lives. But somewhere in your heart, you still have that assurance to continue that relationship. A time will come, they will be the one to do something major for you. There will be a cardinal point in your destiny. Glory to God. Come on, are we together? Yeah. So whatever God says to do, do it. Following the leadership of God, telling God, Lord, I trust you. Lead me. Guide me. Lead me. Guide me. That's how to keep prospering, spirit, soul, and body. Prospering under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Have you been blessed? <laughs> Amen? Yeah. And that's how to prosper. Now, when it's time for seed of sacrifice, I want your heart to be open and say, Lord, show me what to give. For some of you, you've made up your mind, this is what I'm giving. God says, add something to it. Oh, no, not that one. Give another thing entirely. Amen? Come on, are we together? Something entirely different. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's not about money. It is not about uh, church taking something from you. No, God will never need anything from any human being. 
Whatever you give to God is a reflection of your faith and honor of God. And God will bless that thing and give it back to you. God never allowed Abraham to kill Isaac. Did he? No. He won't do it. But he blessed him and gave him back to Abraham. Now I know you fear me. Now I know you fear God. In blessing, I'll bless you. In multiplying, I'll multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. Amen. Ah, thank you, Father. Now, I want us to pray right now and say, Lord, I surrender under the leadership and the authority of your word. I surrender under the leadership and the authority of your spirit. I surrender under the leadership and the authority of my born-again spirit. My mind, my soul, my emotions, under the leadership of my born-again spirit. Paul said, I, born-again Paul, put under my body. I put my body under the leadership of my born-again spirit. I will follow you every step of the way. Whatever you say to do, I will do. Anything you say to do, I will do. I am following you every step of the way. Every step of the way. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping me, Lord. Thank you for helping me, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. You may be seated. My wife and I, we, we entered into a, you know, a commitment like a devotion to God. To obey God no matter what. Obey God come what may. We held hands together after our marriage on the moon. We settled it once and for all. We are going to obey God completely. Amen? And follow God's plan totally. One step at a time. When we make, we've made mistakes, one or two mistakes. I'm not saying we are perfect. We've been perfect all the way. No. All right? But any time we did, we repented. Immediately. We repented. Glory to God. We repented immediately. Say, Lord, we are sorry. We repent. And then our repentance brought us to that point of making a U-turn. You have to make a U-turn. Praise God. You turn, and when you turn, you're turning in faith. Lord, I'm not going to live that way anymore in rejection or rebellion. No, I'm going to follow your plan. Glory to God. Do you know that there's a green pasture for you? Yeah. For your career? For your business? Do you know that? Do you know there's a green pasture for your, for your family? And God is taking you one step at a time. One step at a time. But the question is, are you obeying God? Now, let me tell you something. Look up, please. All right? Don't envy people who are obeying God now. A time will come, the gap will be too much. I'm telling you. You now feel like they are now very blessed. They don't have people's time anymore. Look at We were together. The first church in GLT, we were there together. All right. You will not tell any vain story. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. People are obeying God, though. People are obeying God dangerously, in quote. <laughs> Doing the will of God. Nobody will tell you, give this, give that. Mm. All right. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Open up your heart. Open up your heart to God. Let him lead you. Amen. Let him lead you. I want us to pray for just one minute. All right. And say, Lord, show me my seed of sacrifice. Show me my seed of sacrifice. 
What are you telling my wife and I to sow? What's your instruction? Don't, don't just say, well, we're just going to give any, just anything. No, 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 no. Give like Abel gave, not like Cain gave. Give in faith. Give in faith. Give the fat portions of that which God has given you. Give in faith. Lord, show it to me. Help me, Lord. I want to follow your plan. I want to follow your will. I want to do what you say to do. Help me. My heart is open. It's not about my money. It's not about what I'm giving. It's about my obedience. It is about my obedience. It is about my obedience. It is not about, what, you know, the car or the landed property or the money. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's about my yieldedness to God. Lord, help me. Lead me and guide me. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And Father, thank you for guiding us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. All right. Glory to God. All right, so what we're going to take the seed of sacrifice right away. Amen. Praise God. And then we'll go into other things. Amen. And every seed of sacrifice for 2024, okay, is going into the tabernacle project. Can someone say amen to that? So we'll note the date, every transfer, we'll move everything to the tabernacle project. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All right, be upstanding in Jesus' mighty name. If you need to do anything, do a transfer, all right? Trans you can transfer to the um, seed of sacrifice account, all right? Or if you already have an account with the Tabernacle Project, you can put it there, okay? Just transfer it there. But I think we should do this. Let's transfer it to the seed of sacrifice. Amen? Glory to God. Where's my phone? All right. So if it's something you want to bring forward, maybe a car or a document of a car or a landed property, all right, whatever God says to give, nobody's telling you to give anything, no. all right, hear God. Hear God. Hear God. All right, so if you're bringing in your seed of sacrifice, can we just bring it forward? All right, if you want to transfer it, do, go ahead and transfer it. I'll give you like one minute or so. I hope the network is good here, right? Huh? I hope it is. With a grateful heart, give thanks to the whole softly, softly, give thanks because it's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because it's given 
Jesus Christ, His Son, and now, and now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, Put up the account number again. Because of what the Lord has done for us, and now, and now, I am strong. announcement we have um, a bank account there and we have you know a link right there you know um, that has a QR code so the purpose is different if you want to give cash right now money you can send it to the account number but if you want to give in kind maybe a car a land you know whatever please use the QR code hallelujah and fill it in there okay now, if you want to make a pledge, maybe you don't have the money right away, right here. You want to commit to it. You can also use the QR code, but please snap the account number so that when you're ready to pay, you can just pay into the account. All right, so that's the announcement. Thank you. Give thanks. Give thanks. Oh, we give thanks. Oh, we give thanks. We give thanks. We give thanks. We give thanks, we give thanks. We give thanks, we give thanks. Hallelujah. Are we good? All right, so we can come forward now. If you're coming with a document or you're coming with whatever, the key of a car, landed property, or you have done the transfer or you've made a commitment already, all right, can we just come forward if you can? All right, just step forward here. The altar is large enough to contain at least a good number of people. All right, so come, 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 come. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, God spoke to us and said the seed of sacrifice is actually a mighty plug-in into mysterious prosperity. And he said, everyone who is committed to it faithfully, that he will keep blessing them. And the way it will happen, by 2025, when you're coming back, you would have had many testimonies attached to the seed of sacrifice in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now lift up your two hands, worship God from the depth of your heart. Worship him with your seed. 
worship God and say, Lord, it's an honor to honor you. It's a privilege to honor you. Worship God. It's an honor to honor you. It's a privilege to honor you. I have come with the seed of my sacrifice unto you. It's an honor to honor you. It is a privilege to honor you. This is my sacrifice. Hallelujah. I honor you, Lord. It's my sacrifice. It's my sacrifice. Prate kletosko sikratiska paratiska. Honor him from the depths of your heart. Say, Lord, I honor you with everything within me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now lift up your two hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, confirm your word. Amen. And let it start now. Amen. Let the breakthroughs start now. Amen. Let the open doors start now. Amen. Let the spiritual prosperity start now. Amen. Let prosperity in the soul start now. Amen. Let financial prosperity start now. Let prosperity in the body start now. Amen. Lord, let it start now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now go and prosper. Amen. Go and prosper. Amen. Go and prosper. Amen. Go and prosper. Amen. Come back with testimonies. Amen. Come back with testimonies. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever the need may be, we call forth the supply in the name of Jesus. Whatever you are in faith for, we call forth the supply in the name of Jesus. No matter the need, no matter how big it is, we call forth the supply in the name of Jesus. It is done. It is done. It is done. Let the angels of God of this commission begin to minister to you in the name of Jesus. Be blessed. 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 In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now we are going to be upstanding everyone. You shout hallelujah. Amen. Seven times. Hallelujah. Are you ready? With everything within you. One, two, three, let's go. One, two, three, let's go. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You may go back to your seats in Jesus' mighty name. If you have anything to drop, there are baskets there. You can drop them. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise.